everyone, welcome back to another video. So about a year ago, I made a video about how I passed AZ204, link in the description if you want to see it. And through the past year, I've gotten a ton of questions about it that I've tried to answer as much as I could in the comments. But it's been a year and I figured now it's time to just compile all these questions you had about AZ204, put them all in one neat little video and answer your most common questions. So let's go. Now, one question is, I want to get into DevOps. Should I take AZ204 or AZ104? And as the name would suggest, DevOps is a mix between development and operations. So AZ104, the Azure Cloud Administrator, is really geared towards administrator stuff. And Azure 204, the AZ204 certification, is really geared towards developer stuff. Now, which one should you take between those two? And the answer is they both work the same. Uh, DevOps is a different field altogether than Dev and Ops. Uh, there's a lot about deploying infrastructure programmatically. There's a lot of knowledge that is needed from the infrastructure side. There's a lot of knowledge that is needed from the development side. And so they're both good. Ideally, you would have both, but you don't need both to be a successful DevOps engineer. If you struggle with the dev side, forcing yourself to study AZ204 and be more familiar with development is a good idea. If you struggle with the infrastructure side, then studying for AZ104 to force yourself to learn more about infrastructure is a good idea. So it really depends on the person. There's no clear one is better than the other. Question number two, which is a huge question. This one came back all the time is how good do you need to be at programming? And the answer is you don't, you don't even need to know how to program. Think about it this way. The certification test, if somebody asks you to implement an application in Azure, would you be able to do the implementation of the Azure part? Not can you program, not can you build the application, but can you do the Azure part? Now, what that means is that instead of asking you, are you a good programmer? What they're asking you is, can you use their software development kit, SDK, to run your application on their cloud? So can you upload blob? Can you delete blob? Can you insert an element in Cosmos DB? Can you pass message in service bus? Can you handle an event? Can you subscribe to an event? And all these things. And how can you use the SDK? If you familiarize yourself with the SDK, whether or not you are a professional programmer or you're good or bad at programming, is irrelevant. They just want to know that you're able to use their SDK and that you really know the pattern. And what I've seen in the exam, what I've seen using the SDK on my own is that really there's like a pattern you just have to learn, which is you create a client, then you get to the next step and you get like the container, you get the database, you get the, the queue, you get whatever, and then you go down, you just keep getting stuff and then you, you deal with the actual um, piece of information you want to have. Uh, there's a pattern. If you go and work with more than one SDK, you'll start picking up on the pattern and the exam would be super easy. Another question is what is the passing grade? And I think the passing grade is like 700, but you don't really know what 700 means. You have, I think, 50 something questions. There's like multiple parts on some questions. And it's just hard to figure out that 700 number when you're actually taking the exam. So I wouldn't worry too much about what is a passing score. I would worry more about passing the exam. So what language do I need to know? So because this knowledge can be outdated, I'm going to tell you what I, when I took it, it was C sharp, JavaScript and Python. They may add more programming languages in the future but I would recommend you just look on the Microsoft Learn website or the site for the certifications, which I'm going to put down below. So you can go check it out yourself and figure out what language they have. Again, if you listen to the previous point, you don't actually need to be proficient in that language. You need to know it enough that if you 
are presented with code in that language and that you are presented with the SDK in that language, you are able to follow along and know what's missing and what's required or whatever. Um, I took JavaScript. I don't really do JavaScript work, mostly TypeScript. So there were close enough that I was like, all right, cool, JavaScript. Uh, or I may have taken Python. I don't remember, but it, it, it's not about the programming language. Uh, it will probably all look the same, the SDK. If you look at C Sharp and Python and JavaScript, the order of operation on the SDK is basically the same. So just be able to read the language more or less and you should be fine. The next question is what mock tests did you take before the exam? And I'm going to put those in the description below. I took them on Udemy. They were not exam dumps and I will never, ever, ever recommend exam dumps because you should not study with dumps. Uh, they will teach you the content and you will be able to answer the question, but you won't be able to um, use that knowledge. And so study, learn, make sure you understand the material before you take these exams, because some of them may or may not be exam dumps and you don't necessarily know. For me, I think some of the questions did come back uh, almost verbatim, which was kind of disappointed. I really wanted to uh, not remember the questions and really be uh, proficient in the material. But you know, that's that happened. Uh, but yeah, so these exams were pretty good, uh, cover a wide range of questions, and it's very helpful to, you know, go through the motion of taking the test. All right, so how is AZ204 compared to AZ104? Well, these two exams, so exam wise, taking an exam, same thing. I even took Terraform earlier this year, uh, same thing, really like just answer questions, multiple choice, like same thing for, in terms of the exam. In terms of the content, the AZ204 will have a little bit more focus on SDK and passing messages. Uh, amongst components of an application. Uh, it will also talk about authentication and things like that. So really like the big components that you need for making an application. Whereas AZ-104 would really focus on the uh, administration of a cloud infrastructure, not necessarily using the cloud infrastructure, but really like how do you administer it? How do you do the settings? Uh, do you know how to administer users? Do you know how to administer Blob and Cosmos DB? and virtual machines? Do you know how to use the command line and all these things? So it's really like, they're, they're really their own little topics. Uh, they're not that different from each other. There's a lot of overlap in terms of the infrastructure topic, but where they don't overlap is really in terms of building an application that is functional and can you know interact with the data. Yeah. AZ-104 is really about building infrastructure and managing infrastructure, whereas AZ-204 is about building functional applications that can take advantage of Azure services. Do you need to pass Azure Fundamentals first? No, you don't need to pass Azure Fundamentals for anything. Now, that being said, just because you don't need it doesn't mean you shouldn't study for it. Uh, there's a lot of very valuable information that helps you with the foundations of cloud computing and Azure in particular, such as regions, such as some basics about uh, the, the basic infrastructure. So VMs and uh, blob and databases and things like this. Uh, it's really a very broad overview. I didn't take the exam. I did study for it, but I didn't take it. Um, it's really a broad overview of Azure. And I think it's extremely valuable to at least look over it and at least study the material. You don't have to study as hard as you would for 204 and 104, especially if you start playing with uh, Azure, you should be fairly comfortable with AZ-900 without actually taking the exam. So no, you don't need it, but you should look over the material. Another one is I have service desk experience. Should I go to AZ-104 or should I go to AZ-204? That really depends on you. If you're more comfortable 
with managing infrastructure and you want to really be in a systems engineering team where you uh, manage the infrastructure rather than uh, use it, AZ-104 is the, uh, the exam and the direction for you. If you want to be more into the development side and actually use the infrastructure more than you want to deploy it, then AZ-204 is the route for you. It really depends on you. It really depends on what you want to do with your career. There's no wrong choices. It's really an individual choice. Ideally, if you want to go to DevOps and feel like this, then maybe you should take both like I did, and it will give you a much more global overview of what uh, Azure has to offer from the management side and the development side, and really be able to bring it all together into you know your Azure knowledge. Do I need to write code during the exam? So no, there's no section that asks you to write code. It's really drag and drop or fill in the blanks, but there's no write a fully functional program that can do X, Y, Z, uh, at least when I took it. And it would be very hard to grade something like this, obviously, uh, but no, there's no section like this. But you do have to be able to take a piece of code and they tell you there's one line missing, what goes there, right? Multiple choice, either drag or drag and drop. Like here's three or four lines that are missing, put these lines in order where they are supposed to go. So these are a little bit challenging, especially because they're multiple choice. They're a little trickier because like, you know, multiple choices are, are tricky because, you know, sometimes you're like, oh, I think this is the answer, but I'm not sure. So, but yeah, overall, no, you do not need to write code. Uh, you should be able to do it, but you don't need to do it for the exam. And lastly, are there any free training resources available? So what I did personally is I took training that was paid for by my employer. So that's not free. I took uh, Udemy courses, which are not free, but can be fairly cheap when you go through the pr promotions. Um, if you want free, free, free resources, you have Microsoft Learn. And you also have just experience and getting your hands dirty and working with the actual software development kit and playing with Azure. Um, if you sign up a new account with Azure, you have $200 uh, credit for the first month. So create a new account, get those $200 credits, build your infrastructure, play with code. And that's how you can learn for cheap. Um, it's not hundred percent free um but very cheap because i took it last year because i took my exam last year i don't actually have to retake the uh exam to the the renewal thing until next year uh so at the end of this year once i go through the renewal process i'll definitely make a video but for now i have not gone through this process myself and so I can't really tell you about how it is. From what I've learned, from what I've seen from other people, the renewal process is actually not that difficult. It's really like, here's a couple of modules you have to go through. Here's a quick exam that you can take as many times as you want. And then you get your renewal for another year. So it's not a full blown exam. It's not the same environment that you would have to take the original exam, but you know, it's a little bit involved in the work you have to do and the knowledge you need to have. But I'll make a video once I go through this process. So I hope I covered most of your questions that you may have. If I have not, please leave a comment below and I would be more than happy to answer those questions. If I find that there's enough questions I have not answered that need a video, that if it needs a whole video, I'll do an FAQ part two and you'll have a video with all your answers. Uh, but until then, leave a comment down below, like, subscribe, blah, blah, blah. And if you haven't seen the video uh, for my AZ-204, how it was to take the exam, it's right here. Click on it and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.